Now, with the project cleaned up, let's explore React and let's write our own React code. Currently, we got two JavaScript files here, index.js and app.js. The index.js file will be the starting point of our React application. The code written in here will be the first code that will be executed in the browser when we load our project in the browser. So what we see here in the browser is the result of this code line here executing in the end. Now we don't fully understand this code line yet, but what we do in this file is we're importing a couple of things. That is how in modern JavaScript supported by that build setup we have here, supported by that npm start script and what it does behind the scenes, how we combine multiple files and how we import features like objects or functions from file A into file B. And here we're, for example, importing the React DOM object from the React DOM library. So that's not an object we created. That is an object created by the React team exposed in that React DOM library, which is part of our project because it's part of our dependencies here. Now on that object, we call a render method. And to that render method, we pass this strange HTML code. Now this HTML in JavaScript syntax here only works because of that build step, as mentioned before, and it's actually called JSX. This kind of code is called JSX code, this HTML in JavaScript code. JSX is a special syntax, which is not understood by the browser and which therefore is converted behind the scenes, but which is more convenient for us as a developer to write because working with React will be about building custom HTML elements, these components, and combining them together. And that is way easier if we can just write HTML code, kind of, in our JavaScript files to describe the desired output. So here we kind of create uh, or we use our own HTML element, the app element, which is actually imported from that app file. The file extension is missing here because for JavaScript files, it can be omitted. And the second argument to the render method in the end just tells React where this element should be rendered in the real DOM. Now here we're selecting an element by ID with an ID root. And we can find this on the single page that is part of this project. We find it in the public folder. There we get a couple of images, but also one HTML file. That is the single HTML file that makes up this React application. Because I mentioned before, you typically build these single page applications with React where only one HTML file is fetched from a server and then React takes over and controls the DOM and what's visible on the screen. Now in this index.html file in the body section, we got a div with an ID root and that ID root should look familiar. That is the div, which we in the end select with this document get element by ID code snippet here. And therefore in the end, what we tell React with that line is that we wanna render our app HTML element, our custom HTML element, which is defined in this app.js file into this place, into the place of this element with this root ID. So into the place of that div here in the end. That's what we're telling React. That's why if we visit our page and we inspect it, so we don't view the page source, but we inspect it with the dev tools here. When we have a look at the rendered DOM here, we see in body that there is this div with an ID of a root. And in there, we see our div with hello, which is the content we defined in app.js. And that should make sense because it is the app thing, which we import from the app.js file, which we render here. Now let's take a closer look at this app thing then. That is a function a function which we export to make it available outside of this file, but in the end, just a standard function, a standard JavaScript function. The only special thing about that function is that it returns such JSX code. 
so this HTML in JavaScript code. That's the only special thing. Other than that, it's a regular JavaScript function. And that is super important. What we have here is a so-called React component. We can use it like a HTML element, as we're doing it here in index.js, but it's of course not an HTML element the browser would know, but one defined by us, the developers of this project. Now this component, as it's called in React's world, this custom HTML element, is in the end just a function a function which is defined and exported, and specifically a function that returns JSX. That's important. A component, so a function that should act as a component and be usable as a component by React, must return something that can be rendered in the browser. That could be plain text, it could be a couple of other things, but it can and most typically will be HTML code as well, so this JSX code. And what's interesting is that in the browser, if we have a look at the DOM again, we don't see our app element anywhere here. We don't see an HTML tag called app. Instead, we just see the content of our component here, this div with hello as a text. Because these custom elements, these are not known by the browser. We just write this code in our React application and then when it runs in the browser, React will not render these custom elements, which wouldn't tell the browser anything, but instead it will render the content returned by these custom elements. And that's how these React components work in a nutshell. That is already one very important first piece of knowledge here, that we have these React components, which are functions returning JSX, which we can use to well, tell React and therefore in the end the browser what should appear on the screen. But of course, we typically don't do that with just one simple component that just returns a div of hello. Instead, I mentioned before that I wanna rebuild this basic first example with this delete button and then thereafter dive into a little bit of a more complex project in a second step. And therefore, let's now work towards that first example with that delete button and that modal overlay.